Greetings, everyone, and welcome. Thank you so much for coming to our Kelly Appeal TV, where we discuss the process of the Robert Sylvester Kelly case, where it's going, where it's been, and um, just give some information that I believe will help us in figuring out what's really going on in the system of um, the system of criminal justice and how the the system is doing him so i wanted to connect something with you there was an uh a guy in 1975 i believe that created a um a water engine an engine that ran off water a car engine that ran off water and when you hear his story and you we connect it to what is being done in the system um, to Robert Sylvester Kelly, I feel that if anything, the concern and the true culprit and the true um, monster of the United States of America is its currency system. That's right, money. Now I'm going to connect the situation with this gentleman. He was African American and um, I want to share with you why it's very important that we keep Robert Sylvester Kelly in our forefront and no matter how long it takes for this trial to convene itself we must continue to stay diligent in watching it because not only one person, but many, many, many others. So, um, before Buffalo police rushed to Topps Friendly Market Saturday, there was Aaron Salter, the security guard, killed as he served and protected. Aaron Salter, 55, retired Buffalo police officer. Loved electric cars. Loved electric cars. He built a lab in his garage where he spent countless hours working to develop an engine that could run on water. Develop an engine that could run on water. It's not running off a gas fuel? No, there's no gas fuel. I can't uh, tell you how I use it. I do have a, uh, a patent pending. A local inventor has discovered a way, hear this, to use water to run your car. It's a major breakthrough that will no doubt make motorists happy. And as Ralph Robinson explains, the Pentagon is also showing lots of interest in this project. It's going to be the new platform of technology when oil runs out. Are we not getting into a gas crisis right now? The biggest natural resource in the world is water. Uh, once the engineers get a hold to this uh, revolutionary discovery in no time short, there will definitely be cars running on water. If bottled water will work, and tap water will work. And when I show this vehicle running, I almost uh, show people it running because, as I explained to my lawyers, it shouldn't be running. According to the experts, well, folks, you heard it yourself from uh, the mouth of Aaron Salters, AWS Hydrogen Alternative Energy System. Signing out. Have a good one. We'll see you, uh, hopefully, driving one of Aaron's uh, new uh, vehicles. Shark Tank. Thank you. All right. Damon John gave me a call, and he he told me that he saw that my dad was in a couple photos with his with him, not physically, but you know, with him at a seminar. And I said, yes, you know, my dad's a big fan of yours. We, you know, we watched Shark Tank and, you know, he was an inventor. He had an idea and, you know, we were just talking and he was telling me, you know, the, how sorry he was about what happened and how his heart goes out to us. And, um, you know, he just was asking me what, what, what I could use at this time. And I explained to him a little bit about what was going on with the funeral and he told me that he wouldn't, you know, he wouldn't have a problem doing that, that someone would be in touch. And towards the end of the conversation, he said, you know, like, you know, in the future, like, if you guys need anything, um, don't hesitate to reach back out to me and give me a call because I'm here for you. So 
you know, it was it was a real good conversation. And the reason I'm bringing him up is because there's a connection between him and a man named Stanley Myers. Back in 1998, March 21st, 1998, a man by the name of Stanley Myers was meeting with these guys to fund a, a project of his. He had created a water-powered engine. And he started creating this engine back in 1975, right around the time of the great gas crunch, the gas crisis. I don't care if you use rainwater, well water, city water, ocean water. If you don't have any fresh water, go ahead and use snow. If you don't have any snow available to you, then use salt water because there's no adverse effect to the fuel cell. Myers started working on this project four years ago. He's not a scientist. He isn't even a chemist. In fact, he never graduated from college. Myers was determined, he says, to design something to protect this country from oil embargoes. Uh, we have calculated that if we take the dune buggy from Los Angeles to New York, we would roughly use 22 gallons of water. The Pentagon flew a lieutenant colonel in last week to look at Myers' invention. There's talk of possibly using it in the Star Wars defense program and to run army tanks. Myers is currently perfecting a water fuel cell for cars. It will cost about $1,500. He says it won't need any maintenance and you won't have to replace it. It'll be at least two years before the fuel system goes into mass production. The day it happens will be one the fuel industry hates but it'll put a smile on the face of those who've had to say at one time or another, fill her up. But Stanley Myers was meeting with some guys along with his brother to get funding for his water-powered engine. So they bring him these drinks to the table, and he, I think it was cranberry juice, he takes a drink, he immediately stands up, starts grabbing his neck, he says, they poisoned me. He goes out in the parking lot where he eventually died, but before he died he said, they poison me because I'm working on a water-powered engine. And truth is stranger than fiction. So all these movies you've seen where the government would do this stuff to take somebody out because they were working on something and they make it look like an accident and real shit will blow that Hollywood shit out of the water. A conspiracy to kill five random people? It's ridiculous. Four. Four random people to hide one specific target. We see that big oil can buy the politicians who regulate it, have the military pledge allegiance to its interests, be shielded from pollution restrictions, leech off U.S. tax dollars, control mass media, crush alternative energy, and avert punishment for all of the crimes it commits. It is utterly insane that small boardrooms of self-serving billionaires are empowered to act as though the only future that exists is in their stock portfolios. They've been destroying lives and habitats for over a century, and now their unfettered greed is a threat to human civilization itself. Their path towards a tar-covered, uninhabitable dystopia won't be reversed unless the power structure is flipped. We can't fight the rule of oil tycoons without fighting the system of corporate empire that dutifully serves them. So what are your thoughts? <clears throat> Before Buffalo police rushed to Topps Friendly Market, so what are your thoughts? I mean, can it, can the government be conspiring against its citizens in order to create money for themselves? Are we all just walking targets now? You know, you figure the Texas shooting that just took place in a public school setting, in an elementary school, in a middle-class society. God rest those souls, everyone who was in that building because each and every one of those people were affected through trauma in some way. Some are going to be... Uh, it for life because they have to live on the anxiety level of, of existence. And many of us know what that traumatic 
feeling of anxiety feels like, that something is going to happen every minute we turn, every second. And then there are those who have moved on to the other side of where we all must go. But yet, at what time are we prepared to do this? Will our work be done before, you know, that day comes? So I put this out because I feel that everyone should be watching everyone, watching what happens, seeing what happens, and reporting the stories that happen and why we feel that they're taking place. Why is everyone allowing Robert Sylvester Kelly to constantly sit in an incarcerated state when he's already stated that he did not do what they're claiming that he did? Wow. What are your views? What are your views? Because with hope and with continual, you know, telling of the story as the sisters of Robert Sylvester Kelly said, now I don't care if they're biological sisters, cousins, best friends, or just play sisters. It doesn't matter. It's the, it's the, <clears throat> it's the, the narrative, quote, narrative in which they are producing for this man. So to me, if they are trying to support and help him, I'm down with them no matter what. So it's not like they did anything horrific to him. You know, it's not like they, you know, slandered his name or whatever. At that point, then I could consider it. But for now, the reality of the R. Kelly Appeal TV is to include them and incorporate them with respect. So we're going to put some respect on their names for the sake of this channel, for the sake of this platform. Let's send that moment of silence to those in the Texas shooting. You know, I have a grandson who lives in Texas and he was just here in Chicago um, a few weeks ago and he left to go back to Texas, I think San Antonio. So it wasn't too close to San Antonio, but it wasn't too far either. So I give a shout out to my grandson. We love you and stay safe. Try to do the right thing and just know that, wow, this too shall pass. This too shall pass. We know we're living in a time, family, that we must be aware of what we're feeling, what drama we choose to embark upon in our physical existence, being aware of our surroundings and knowing that, you know, the next step, planning it, you know, it's to a point where we really can't even go outside of our homes anymore without a mission. There is a purpose place and thing that we must be seeking in order to go out there into the world. So we've been incarcerated in our own homes, in our own buildings. You know, um, this is a sad place, a sad time in the world. And it makes me think, is this the land of the free and the home of the brave? Um... You know, Memorial Day is on its way to those who have serviced our community and died for the right of many of us to, you know, just be able to do what we do every day. <clears throat> and in that doing, are we grateful? Are we armored up? Are we spiritually balanced so that all things will benefit us? You know, how many of you out there 
have someone that you know who has suffered on the hands, behind the hands of the almighty dollar, whether it was not having enough money for, for an addiction. And so they go and do what they need to do in order to just get that next fix. You know, it's very saddening how many people at one point in this world died at the hand of um, just some a bomber jacket and some name brand tennis shoes. So we have a lot to be grateful for in relation to Robert Sylvester Kelly because he is still here with us. You know, um, there are many things that could have already transpired had we not have kept our eyes on the prize and that's getting him out of there. The protests, the marches, the research, the podcasts, begging mass media to help us to tell the story, but we don't have the money. People coming together, sharing these conversations with their points of view. And I want to read before we get out of here. I want to read to you some comments that was made. Just 18 hours ago, just 18 hours ago, DH writes, you already burnt bacon, killed him because he knew what he knew. I keep telling them that we are smarter. You know, is there, is there a, how can I put it? A punishment for being intelligent in this world. You know, you look at boys in the hood, Ricky, the smartest of them all. He was the one that was gunned down. Take my son. I'm just using, you know, ideas that I can think of right now. My son, very intelligent, straight A student, gifted, talented, could play music, could sing, choreograph, contract with, uh, had a contract with uh, IBM to work on um, computer technology after he graduated, was almost at his four-year mark of graduation, and then something happened. He was pink slipped, and all of a sudden, he is now labeled schizophrenic. And he was a, a very intelligent, our whole family is very intelligent, extremely intelligent young man. Hmm. 20 hours ago, Kevin Fantris says, he was the target and that's why they trying to make a racial thing out of it as a smoke screen. It was all about killing the officers so they could stop production of his idea or so they could steal his idea for themselves. And see, that's what I believe is happening with Robert Sylvester Kelly. He's incarcerated because they wanted to stop production. They wanted to stop production. So thank God that he's still here with us. And Rashid A says, Kevin, yeah, something stinks. J.H. writes, no oil is big business. They didn't want his invention to see the mainstream, period. They didn't even want us to get near this information.
Remember what we spoke about. Once again, there was a hidden agenda behind what happened, and now we know. So when we know better, we do better. What are some ideas that we can do here? M. Sky writes, not surprised, but keep pushing for the truth to get out. So that's one thing we can do. Keep talking. I mean, we're not sharing anything that we don't already see. We see it. And I know the statement is, stand for something or fall for anything. Fall for everything. RJ says, I don't believe it was a coincidence and I didn't know about it last week. This is a big deal. Yes, it is. 21 hours ago. ES writes, this is one of the ways we have changed the world with no recognition. Once again, not surprised. So world, we're watching everything you're doing. And you know, we sit back and watch those who are in power quietly watch. Do we have anything universally besides karmic vibration and karmic energy, spiritual prayer that can do anything greater because we're not that killing machine. Our culture is very loving, family, very kind. And I think, mm, JC writes, hold on. I just saw where he did this interview about a month and a half ago. It was on Inside Edition. He was the target. So he had just came out on Inside Edition. And um, a month later, that that shooting happened um tmz held the story so if you want to go look at it yourself um outside of this podcast feel free to go to tmz <clears throat> at writes you have to be beyond careful when you are dealing with this devil this has been done before they took him out when you have something that those col- colonizers want they will do everything and anything to you The family needs security. They need to be very careful. His son and wife are in danger. So let's keep an eye on that. Rest in peace, my brother. HD writes, I guess Facebook will fact check me again. LST, they killed the first guy that came up with it. He was a white guy. They killed him too. TH Lamont, that's vehicle running with water is the shit. What could be better, my nigga? <laughs> GC writes, kill 10 to hide one target. Old war tactic. But we're not fools like they think we are. Very, very interesting, huh? Whoa. Prayer. Yeah, they were messing with the government's money. They don't care what color you are. Told you exposing that stuff will get you clipped. Hey, have a read of some of the comments. We did, we have, we are. So what are your thoughts there? Um, a friend of mine told me the story of the spook that sat by the door who acted as though he knew nothing, lived his life and did what he needed to do for himself. And yes, If a society doesn't see, especially in our culture, when we see something, we compete with it and we try to do it better when in our culture, when we, um, how can I put it? When we see someone else doing something, we want to do it. So, 
um, either competition or just wanting to do what we see, you know, as a chameleon or say a person who just wants to do it because you see it being done. So when there's nothing to see, the majority of society does not become successful unless they take the initiative to do it for themselves. Now that's another topic. That's another situation. But when we see our people happy, doing things that make us grow, we better be doing it kind of like under the table, I guess, in order to keep it where it's at. You know, that's why it's not about me making partner with YouTube because the information I'm sharing. It seems to me that the less I become partner, the less money that can be made on created content, the less situations come before, you know, but I really don't, it doesn't matter to me because when he talked about that drink and he talked about, you know, someone killing him in that drink, I know what that's about because March 23rd, 2011 at 6 p.m., no, at 3 p.m., 3 p.m., my neighbor did it to me. I turned around with LSD, PCP, heroin traces, and crack cocaine in my system and don't know what none of it looks like but marijuana and uh, the margarita. And I guarantee you this. I just started my second black-owned black family business, incarcerated 41 days, not knowing who my name was, not knowing my name. How does that feel when you have a name and you can't respond to it because the drugs have you so drugged out? I wasn't supposed to come back psychologically. Like they said with R. Kelly, they had the top forensic scientists coming and trying to pick my brain. This was no joke. This was a true life situation that I made it out of. So if I can do it, I know R. Kelly's going to be able to do it. He's going to be able to do it. But just like Bill Cosby, when he comes home, he's going to be different. He's going to be quiet. He's going to shut up. And he's just going to live his life. He may even be homeless because I was doing some research on the HUD housing, HUD and um, housing and urban development and what the, the criteria is on the individuals who have been titled sex offenders. No one wants to live next to you. So that's going to be an issue. Housing is one of the basic essential needs that we, besides water, that we need. And then nurturing and love and compassion and then education and then and then self-fulfillment and actualization according to Maslow's hierarchy of needs. And family, if we don't get the basics, the structure of the house is going to fall if we don't get the emotions in check, it's going to fall. So I just want to get on and just say to you that life will eventually show us everything clear and in detail. And it's not up to us to try to fix this thing because it's so big. We just have to do our part and just be mindful and aware and don't go out doing something ridiculous because it's not the end of the world. Many people say when people lose hope, when people lose hope, the world suffers. When justice ends, tyranny begins. Do they want us to go to war? Is that the reason why life has been existing for so long? Because we choose not 
to go out and slay and devour? Is that why we have been able to live in a society for this long, millions and millions of years, because there's love on the planet? Happy people. Yeah, 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 yeah. Step in. In the name of love. We got to step in the name of love, right? And we got to believe we can fly beyond all this. You know, I just got my siding replaced, my soffit on my house because the wind and the birds, they, you know, were going in trying to make nests and stuff. So I finally got it fixed and there's a bird that's trapped in there. And I hear him clipping and trying to get out. But yet he didn't have enough sense like the other birds to flee. Why? Comfortability. He was comfortable. And right in the midst of comfort, he got scared and he trapped himself in. We did nothing but just support the structure of our family home. That's all we did. But God bless him. You know, someone came and opened up the um, one soffit panel. And if he's smart enough, he'll get out. But if he's made his home comfortable, he won't get out. Why? Because wherever we open the space, if it's too much hay and to make his bed comfortable, he won't be able to get out because he won't be able to see the light. Why? Because he smothered himself in there over comfort. And that's what many people do over the love of money. So we're going to keep on keeping on with the Appeal Channel. We're going to keep informing you about things and situations that go on in the world and how it's happening while we're waiting, while we're waiting on sentencing, because so many people are watching. It's going to be much more fair than it would have been if everybody kept quiet and believed everything that was being censored. Or is it uncensored? I don't know. I really don't use that word a lot, but being hidden from the world. So with that, thank you for liking, commenting, joining, and subscribing to this podcast. And if you want more links of where we are, please join us every Sunday, 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And then you can go to the R. Kelly Appeal TV, subscribe to it, and then look on the video link or the community link where you will find what we have been talking about verbatim in a continuous recorded perspective. Now, if you go back, to the video before this, it will share with you what the sisters of Robert Sylvester Kelly has been saying about his um, situation and how, you know, he was unable to connect to his own servicing of his um, convictions and um, everything was taken from him. So he had no opportunity to be able to share with any attorney or to give the information to someone inside that could help him find an attorney that could help him because everyone else had walked away. Everyone else thought that the case was way too big to handle. God bless every person that believes in the innocence of Robert Sylvester Kelly and know that, you know, this too shall pass in a successful way. And just keep going forward. Wow, it's been 34 minutes and I only wanted to get on for 20 minutes to talk about that situation. But um, yeah, family, we love and we thank everyone for being a part of the Kelly Nation, uh, our Kelly Appeal TV, you know, support. And those who like us and those who sit back and listen without anyone knowing who they are. They know this information is getting out to thousands of people. They know, but they may not want to be connected to that for whatever their reasons. 
And for me, I'm not trying to be a number one YouTuber. I'm just trying to be here to do what I do and get this off my chest so I won't be out here wilding out, flipping out, going crazy, being emotional. Because then that's when my family becomes part of the hate, becomes part of the the analysis of crime and criticalness that doesn't have to be. I would rather be on the side of love because I've been on the side of hate and it doesn't look good. And one day of hate cost me almost 11 years of my life. Maybe not behind bars all the way. But you got to add the introduction all the way to probation and parole. You have to add all those years. And it went from March 23rd, 2011 until um, 20, 2019. It was supposed to go till 2021. But yes, I thank you. I thank you. And um, this gives me a platform to also to share my story. Um, because our stories are so similar. And I know there's more stories out there. There's more stories out there. So feel free to share with me. Even if you got to call me and we got to talk, you know, my information is in the about section of this channel. So God bless, peace, love, and light. And as always, keep it 100 and know that you are blessed. Know that we are blessed. Know that just to be here in this moment, it's a blessing. Peace, love, and happiness, and we'll see you next time.